All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is August 24th, 2023. And man, we are going to have some more fun tonight. For those of you who love digging into uh, more detail, deeper details of the worker group that's going to be here during the portion of SEALs that will be here with the Son of Man for 40 days and working during SEALs, you're going to love this one. This, of course, is going to be the continuation of the last video, which was the, the first half, if you will, of Romans, essentially the first half. Uh, it was the first eight chapters, and there just wasn't enough time to get to the to the rest of it. Well, thank God there wasn't, because today, earlier today, I was at least two hours alone just in about half of Romans chapter 9. So we are going to be diligent tonight. We are going to seek and search out the word definitions and see where all of this stuff leads us. And it's going to be, like I said, a continuation because you're going to see the layers and the layers just right there in the words and in the definitions that even though these are things that are in the is, right? For those of you that don't know, there's the was, the is, and there's the is to come. This ministry is revealing the revelation of the Lord. It is revealing the open books. And when you begin to see it, you see it all throughout Scripture. We've gone all the way back to the beginning of Genesis, right to the end of Revelation, in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of connections to the revelations of what we call the open books. And you're going to see that even in the was, which is the Old Testament, the is, which is from Christ until the pre-trib escape, and then from the pre-trib to the end of the millennium is the is to come. When you see the is and the layer within it that reveals the is to come, that confirms to us so many things we have already understood and sheds even more light on it, it's, it's absolutely incredible. And we did that with some incredible understanding, some incredible revelation in the last one. And this one, man, oh man, is it ever going to add to it in, uh, even more. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to focus in on this. We're going to see this pre-trib group and this worker bride group. You know, we all we understand that there's a pre-trib group. But from that pre-trib, there's a group that's chosen to remain to serve the Lord. They're like his remnant bride, that that portion that they were supposed to go, but they were chosen to remain to help bring in the great multitude rapture, which we know is the spring wheat harvest, right? The pre-trib is the winter wheat harvest from which a portion will remain to stay. And then there's the spring wheat, which is the great multitude rapture in the seventh year of seals. For those, when you hear me say seventh year of seals, you're probably thinking, what is this guy talking about? Well, don't worry about it. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. There are so many details. There's so much excitement taking place. And, you know, we've got some time left, it looks like. So we're still hopeful over the, the next little few weeks that are coming, couple few weeks. But, um, you know, we have an understanding here of what we're looking for. And even though not everybody's in agreement here, for the most part, we, they it's understood. And if this time passes, well, we know exactly where we're looking for. So with that, uh, I've been very busy uh, just doing stuff with the ministry, busier than I've ever been in a long time. And, uh, you know, it's already busy when it comes to the forum and things like that. Uh, for those that don't know, when you hear me speak about the forum and, and uh, you know, other brothers and sisters in communication around the world, I'm talking about right here. You can come to ministryrevealed.com. This is the home page right here. You can go to the menu and you can come down here and you can click on the forum. Uh, it take you a few seconds to sign up and join 11, 1200 people from around the world, all communicating, sharing in prayer, uh, Bible studies, people meeting with each other, meeting up because they live close by and grabbing coffees and becoming great friends. Uh, it, it's awesome. So you're going to hear me talk about that a lot. And uh, but there's something else that uh, has been keeping me very busy lately, uh, especially these last couple days. And it's because we've started to do shorts. You can see the link right here. So this is a new link 
we have here in the ministry. Um, I recorded a couple of them late last night. And the first one was posted um, about 11 a.m. I think it was our time here, Mountain Standard Time. And there'll be another one tomorrow. And I'm, I'm hoping, I'm not guaranteeing, but I'm hoping to be able to do one a day in the shorts. And so I'm going to show it to you right now. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I was so excited doing it. I wasn't excited like this guy. <laughs> Unfortunately, the uh, YouTube shorts, because it's still relatively new. I mean, it's been around for a couple of years, but it's really gaining speed. And, and they said that um, out of the top 50 views on YouTube, 40 of them were shorts. So it was time to get into this space. And our brother's been pushing me to go into it. And so I started doing it, and there's going to be many more that he's working on as well, our brother, Uncle Jimmy. But uh, what happens is in YouTube, for shorts at the time, right now, you, and soon you'll be able to, but at the moment, you're not able to choose your thumbnail for shorts. So unfortunately, this was automatically generated. So <laughs> not the most flattering, but I'm okay with it. It's the first one, and I didn't get to choose that. So let me play it for you. I just, like I said, I had a lot of fun. And you'll see the next one that'll come out uh, tomorrow afternoon as well. So let's have a listen. Want to hear a mystery in what we call who the Gospels are speaking to? We've all seen that in Matthew 27, Jesus going to the cross was arrayed in a scarlet robe. But did you know in Mark, it says he was arrayed in purple? And in Luke, it says he was arrayed in a gorgeous robe. And gorgeous means white, radiant, beautiful. Sounds like a bride's gown, doesn't it? Do you realize that purple and scarlet are both tribulation colors? We see them on the woman riding the beast in Revelation chapter 17. There you go. Yay. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited for it. Like I said, it was fun doing it. That first one, I think, I think took me about eight takes. Um, and by the way, nothing scripted. Um, I, I don't script anything. I have an idea. I have a concept. I, I know where I want to go. Uh, but nothing's written down, nothing scripted, and uh, it's the way I've kind of always rolled because uh, it's just seeking and studying, and the spirit is working, man, because it is just all in my mind. I know where to recollect it. I know where to connect it. I know the words. I mean, it's it's so exciting. Uh, the second one, I think I just did two takes, the one that you'll see tomorrow. And so, like I said, there'll be many, many more coming, and uh, I'm looking forward to it reaching many, many more people. That's that's the whole purpose. That's the whole hope. You know, I know our videos are long. I know it's a lot for people to take in. But at the same time, you know, it, this isn't just a, a whimsical, just here's a couple things. There you go. Go look. No, this is this is like beyond university level. This is like the last year university level of the revelation of Jesus Christ. And it takes time. It takes repetition. It takes showing these connections all throughout scripture to help people see it, follow it, understand it, discern it, so that they can now take it themselves, go watch it, pause it, follow it, and seek it out to get the understanding themselves and see that it's all true. So that's why it's longer. And I do understand the shorts and hopefully the shorts will get people to come and to see more. And of course, you know, like I always say, this is where I direct them. So all of the shorts are directed to this playlist right here, the Revealed End Time Study Note series. In this, I always recommend the first four videos. I believe there's what? I think there's 12, yeah, 12 videos in it. But the first four videos are key. And another place you can find them is by going to ministryrevealed.com, which you can click on right here from the YouTube channel, or you can find in the description box under the videos, you can go to ministryrevealed.com. Here's the landing page, as we've mentioned. And you can come to the, the menu, and you can click on the intro. And when you come to the intro, it's even easier to follow. And that's because you have them all in order, the way I, I, I prefer them in this, in a sense, the way I prefer them, um, beyond just the four. But the four that are in order, they're the same order as they are in YouTube for the first four. And this one right here is your intro. So for anybody that's new, 
And you heard me say in the seventh year of seals at the beginning, you're going to think this guy is nuts. Seven years of seals. Does that mean seven years of trumpets? Yeah, it absolutely does. I'll be doing a, a shorts in the next couple of days or so um, about it. Just saying I can prove it to you in one chapter of the, of the Bible that pre, mid, and post are all true and they take place over a 14-year and change period. One piece of scripture, one chapter in the entire Bible lays it all out. So it's a great one to make a, a short for, and uh, I know I'm going to have fun making that one too. But that's what you're going to find out here. This intro is 22 minutes long, and it gives you an overview of what's spoken about here, which is the revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to, the how it reveals 14 years and a period of time called above the 14 years. It's just a short period of 50 days. And then the fourth video, which is the big one. This one's about two hours and 45 minutes. These two are 30 minute Bible studies to begin to give you the understanding of the revelation we call who the Gospels are speaking to. You're going to see things like in that clip, you know, the difference in the colors of the robes. You're going to see another one that's coming out tomorrow uh, in the discourses of Luke, Mark, and Matthew, how Jesus is in a cloud, singular, in the clouds, plural, and Matthew is in the clouds, plural, but it doesn't mean in, it actually means on. Um, you're going to be able to see and discern and understand things like this. And in understanding who the Gospels are speaking to, everything will begin to open up for you. Revelation will open to you, not just the book of Revelation, not just Daniel, not just the discourses. I mean, the entire Bible will begin to open up to you and understanding will become known to you in things that you've had questions on probably most of your Christian life if you've been spending a good amount of time in scripture and noticing these differences within the gospels. Or, or something in account with Daniel just doesn't seem right, and so on and so forth. You're going to realize that there's a reason there are three discourses, and they sound similar, but yet very different also when you read them. The answer is 50 days, then seven years of seals, and seven years of trumpets. To understand how it was all missed, it's all because of Matthew. This is, as much as it's a big video, two hours and 45 minutes, it is a fantastic video because it helps you to understand how is it that after all of these centuries and people thinking it's only seven years, how is it that you, oh sure, this ministry has the revelation of 14 years. I promise you it's true. It's all throughout scripture. And this video is gonna help you understand why and how the reasons it was missed. And it's because everybody's foundation is from the gospel of Matthew. And they look to Mark and they look to Luke even less in the Synoptic Gospels as just little add-ons to a piece of a story instead of seeing them individually for what they're saying. And when, they, when you see it, when you understand it, you will understand what 2 Corinthians chapter 12 is talking about above 14 years ago, one that goes to the third heaven that's like a rapture, then one that goes to paradise, that is the great multitude rapture. <coughs> Excuse me. And finally, him returning unto them the third time. It's a taking, a taking, a return. It's absolutely beautiful. So with that, that's where you can see it right here in this playlist on Ministry Revealed YouTube channel or on ministryrevealed.com. And as the shorts continue to build and you want to come check them out, you can just click on shorts right here and hopefully uh, we're able to get out one a day. And as it continues to build, we'll be able to reach more and more people. And part of the other reason for this is they're going to be shared also on our Facebook uh, page. They're going to be shared on our Twitter page as well. So um, for everyone else that's out there and is trying to reach people with this understanding, with these revelations, the, the whole purpose of these shorts is to be able to reach those people. Something quick, you know, it's less than 60 seconds. Every short is less than 60 seconds. And so with that, if they can't even listen to 60 seconds to begin to get a little question of idea of something, well, <laughs> move on, as they say, all right? So again, we are going to go in deep. We are going to have some fun. We are going to cover 
some serious ground here today. And it's going to start all the way back here in early portion here of Romans chapter 9. But I do want to bring something else to your attention. I know it's it's one of those uncomfortable ones, you know, when and and I knew it, but what am I going to do? Am I not going to tell you guys when I've understood something? Am I going to keep something from you? Am I going to hide it from you when I when I have an understanding? No, I never have. I've never lied to you guys, and you guys know that. I've, I've mentioned this before. And that is that I knew the ministry would take a hit and pay a price for saying we've got, you know, 11 to 12 months left to go, that we're looking at August of next year based on the entirety of the revelation that we were revealing, uh, and, and that's been revealed over the past six years. And for that, look what happens. You see, our usual views after four days are about 25, 2600, and then it usually gets to, you know, whoops, then it usually gets to, you know, mid high threes to, to 4,000 views after a couple weeks or so. These are the last two. There's two weeks ago, 2500. There's four days ago, 1700, almost 1,000 shorter than usual. So I know what it tells me. I know it tells me that there was a large portion of people that are only looking for the day and hour. And that's okay. You know, if, if that's where they want to go, um, <laughs> so be it. I've said here in this ministry many times over the years that it is not about the when. We are watching for him coming. We are diligent in trying to seek and search him out in understanding that time. But the greatest part of it all is the diligently seeking him and it being revealed. That's what's so awesome. That's the greatest part of this entire ministry is having an understanding of him that has never been understood to this level in the is to come in all of human history. We have been blessed to receive this. And this is the evidence that not everybody felt the same way. I knew it was coming. Before that, you know what happens? Not only do we get less views, and here's the thing. It's not about, oh, I want more and more views. I don't give a rip about more views. I want to reach more people. And what sucks is seeing that number just tells me how many were actually paying attention. And that sucks. That blows. You know, even though I kind of knew it, to see it sucks. Well, you know what? The same thing kind of happens with support. You know, um, support just, it dries up, man. Whenever, and this is the thing that happens with, uh, with prophecy teachers and, and ministries and channels about prophecy in particular when a time is close, it gets really, really slow. And I've never had a time where we were looking a year out. So now not only was a time close and then it passed, and once it passed, we got the revelation that it was one more year. That was like a double whammy. So we're paying bills on credit cards now. <laughs> we, we trust the Lord will provide, you know, but we're doing things on credit cards. Could you imagine this? Listen to this, just to give you an idea of what's going on. Everybody, we all know our bills and everything are going up, but listen to this. We have uh, uh, a, two utility companies. So we use one, there's one that's for uh, electricity and there's one that's for gas. And I've known that, there were, that each of them have some sort of program where you can combine them together with one of these companies or with the other one. But, you know, I had heard about it and I just kept kind of brushing it off because I was like, ah, I don't know what they offer. And we got our last electric bill in the middle of summer, and we don't even use, uh, we don't even have, let alone use, um, uh, 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 an air conditioner or anything. Our, our gas, I mean, our electric bill was $425 just for last month. Could you imagine? How are people surviving? It's insane. So that one wasn't put on the credit card. Um, that one is just being delayed. So um, I'm saying this for many reasons, but for one of them is also, please remember to help continue to support the ministry. The ministry is in need. Um, we're not even able, you know, we try to help about a handful of brothers and sisters in the ministry help pay their, some of their bills when they're in need as well. Uh, I haven't been able to send anybody anything for at least a couple weeks because we don't have it. And uh, our brother, our ministry that we support over in Uganda that you guys all know, 
uh, Steve over in Uganda. Um, you know, we're trying to get more support there as well. So if somebody wants to send support for Uganda, just put a message for Uganda or for Steve, or you could say uh, just for the ministry in general or just, you know, for the ministry, and we will still send some to Steve. But if you say for Steve or Uganda, the entirety of what somebody sends when they say that goes to Steve. So there's always a need. And so you can imagine we're the sole support for Steve and his team and the ministry going out in Uganda. And so without us having support, if we can't even pay our bills, obviously there's no way we're able to send to him either. So, you know, hopefully with this, you know, a little shout out, a cry out uh, that the ministry's in need. Uh, hopefully um, we'll have some that can. And those that can't, that's okay. This isn't saying everybody has to. This is for those that are led. This is for those that can. This is those who thought about it. And for everybody else, prayers are number one. Prayers are appreciated. They're accepted always, obviously. And not only us, but over everybody here in the ministry as well. All right. So with that, let's get a move on. Sip of coffee first. All right. Let's go in. So we're going to start in Romans 9. And in Romans 9, right off the bat, it, it really got crazy just on one word. It was something we've touched on from the previous one in, in how the word was found in relation to be accounted that we shared on in the last one. And how we know that from the be accounted worthy group, there's a group that is the remnant bride remaining worker bride of christ okay there's there's the pre-trib and they all go but there's a portion from them that we know remain and we know all about these guys we know them very 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 well right let me start with this we, we've covered this before but this is a great place to open it we've shared how the wedding feast there's a wedding feast in luke there's none in mark and there's one in matthew that's because there's a gentile bride and then there's the jewish bride at the end the Gentile bride is the one in Luke. And this is the wedding feast. And we, we've broken it down. We've spoken about the wedding feast. You know, we say this all the time. For everybody that gets vanished out of here and going pre-trib, do not go to the highest room when you're in the third heaven. Go to the lowest room so that you don't get kicked out if somebody more honorable is brought up to that higher position in the third heaven. All right? It's a big deal. It's right here in Scripture. It's explaining it all for you. So we all want to sit in the lowest room. And if we're worthy or whoever's worthy, somebody will come and bring them up to the highest, uh, to the higher level. So remember that, right? We've talked about it. But Luke 14 is the only one that after the wedding, the, uh, after the wedding feast has a great banquet story. And the great banquet we know is for those who are part of the resurrection of the just. So who are the ones that go in the pre-trib and who are the ones that are getting this, this great banquet meal after? They're the ones who are part of the resurrection of the just, right? And this group, as we know, they're both explained to us also in the resurrection about who's accounted worthy, right? To be accounted worthy. The accounted worthy group are the ones in Luke 21, 36. They're the ones who will be accounted worthy of that world in that pre-trib escape. But so are this important distinction right here, comma, and. Comma, and is a separation between two different things, but they're a part of the whole. It's like they're added together, okay? Two plus two. Two is its own, two is its own, and together they make four, okay? So they're separate, but they're added together. And these are the accounted worthy, comma, and those who will be part of the resurrection of the dead. So it's the same thing. These are the accounted worthy that are going to the third heaven, that are going to the wedding feast, and these are the ones that will be part of the banquet after the seven-day wedding that will take place in heaven. The Lord will return on the eighth day, as we all know, begins his 40 days, and when he does, he begins it with a... Um, a, a, a banquet that he's going to have with this group where he's going to open their understanding. Okay, so there's a pre-trib group being prepared to be taken out. And 
from that group, there's a group being informed. They're going to be told. They're not just going to be left hanging. They're going to be told right before the pre-trib happens, according to Luke 12, they're going to be told by the Lord or the angel of the Lord or however it's going to work that he's gone to he's going to the wedding and that they have to be prepared for when he will return. So they're going to be aware of it. These are the two groups. And these are the is to come two groups. When we come now into Romans, and we're starting here in Romans 9 to continue from the previous video, there's two groups in the layering, but this is also an is. So, so what is the picture of the is, if you will, of Romans? Well, it's all those from the time of Christ until the moment of the pre-trib escape, okay? Till before, the right before the moment of the pre-trib escape or right before the moment when the Lord informs that remnant remaining group from the Gentile bride portion, that remnant remaining group, right at that moment, right before that moment, from Christ until that moment, the is that we're living in is how you would read Romans now. So you would read it as a, a group of people that are gone out to spread the word throughout the world, that are, that are bringing fruit in, that are bringing a people into Christ. But all throughout history, in, a, in the is since Christ, until this time happens, it's those that have passed. So there are, there are those who are bringing them in, right? The apostles, the disciples, those that they gave testimony to, and, you know, people all throughout history that were going around spreading the word and bringing people in. And then those people passed and those people passed. That's, that's who it's talking about. And it's still happening right now. People are still out spreading the gospel. And some, I'm sure, will still pass over this next year and more people will come into Christ. And, and those that they brought in, some will still pass. That's all of the is. The is to come will be all of those alive. It will be all who are left alive who have not yet tasted of death. They will be the ones going pre-trib and a portion chosen to remain. That is the is to come hidden within the is of Romans 9. And for anybody that's new, we are able to do this all throughout scripture pulling it out from everywhere but when you hear something like this if you're new i i highly recommend pausing and going watching those intro videos first because to see this you have to have a, an adjustment in your vision you have to be able to have an end time understanding begin to open up in you and when you do like thousands of other people here around the world they see it they understand it. They're finding pieces and portions themselves. And we're going to even talk about that with a couple of things people have found as well uh, as we go in through this study. All right. So in Romans 1, uh, 9, 1, sorry, um, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. I just thought that was a really good place to start, right? That was Paul talking. We come down to... Romans 9. Okay, maybe we'll start in 6. Let's go to Romans 9, 6. Not as though the word of God hath not taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now listen to this. That is... They which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for seed. Well, that rings a bell, right? Remember this in the last one? Specifically a remnant? Specifically a remnant? If you recall in the last video, when we went into this, this accounted that we went to look into, Right, we went to see this be accounted. So when we look went to Luke 21, 36, and we were just showing it in Luke 20, 30, 35, it's the Luke's group. This, this is the group that's the being accounted worthy. And from the accounted worthy, we know there's a remnant bride portion that remains. We went into Psalms 22. And in Psalms 22, 
we were able to pull out this incredible piece of understanding that's directly connected to not the accounted worthy who are taken at the beginning in the above portion of the 14 years, but this seed that's going to what? That shall serve them. That shall serve them. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They, who are the they? The seed shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people. See, future tense. That shall be born that he, uh, uh, that he hath done this. So we know this is in the was, and it's also reflecting an is, right? When Christ came and those that would serve him. And it's also reflecting an is to come. That's why, I mean, we, we've covered it many times in, uh, in Ecclesiastes 1.9. The thing that was shall be, the thing that is shall be, right? Nothing new under the sun. So was shall be part of the is, uh, of the is to come. And the is shall also be part of the is to come. And what is that about? That's about here a little, there a little, right? You're going to find parts and pieces and typologies all throughout Scripture that give you the picture of the is to come from the was and the is to bring the clarity to prophecy that has confused people for centuries. But you see, it's the seed. You see that? A fruit, planting the seed, the fruit plant, because why, you gotta bear fruit? Now, fruit can be wheat, it could be, right? It could be grain and so forth. That's, that's the actual context that's talking about. But this is, is also, you can say, a picture of just uh, uh, fruit as in, uh, as just bringing forward fruit in general. You're going to see when we get to one place, it is so crystal clear the two groups it's talking to that are the ones that are going to be bringing forth seed, which are those who are the seals workers compared to those who are the 144,000 of the trumpets workers. It is literally the first two places in the only two gospels where it should be that are directly being spoken to. It's, it's so perfect. It, it, I was cracking up. It was so good. And who are they? The seed. The seed, all right? So this is what we're talking about here. It's all of this. It's all about this seed, okay? In uh, Romans 9, 8, but the children of the promise are counted for seed. So now let's keep going. Watch this. This seed, what, what ends up happening when we're looking into the the seed and the the connection to this time well what about um romans chapter uh, uh, sorry luke chapter 12 okay we're gonna go into luke chapter 12 sorry come on <laughs> we're gonna go into john chapter 12 as i even say john and i click on luke <laughs> all right all right brain fart over okay Listen to this. We're going to go to John 12, verse 24, to find out information about this seed. You ready for this? Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit remember where john is guys john chapter 12 when we go to our our um chapters to years it's the fifth year of seals remember that it's the fifth year of seals so what did we have over here when we were in actually i'll just go this way when we were in psalms 22 what does it say a seed shall serve him okay they shall come so we're reading this in the prophetic for the is to come when we come to john chapter 12 or when we go to our chapters to years we go to psalms 22 with the equivalent year time frame and it's in the fourth year when when what when all this persecution is starting and the fleeing when we come to where it is in john chapter 12 it's the equivalent picture of the fifth seal and what happens in the fifth seal. Well, let's go have a look and read what we're told in the fifth seal. In Revelation chapter 6. 
Remember what John just said, unless they die, right? Look at what the fifth seal says. Revelation 6, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does that not know, does that not ju uh, uh, event, judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? You see? The ones that were what? Slain for the testimony. The ones that were what? Slain, butchered, killed, slaughtered for their testimony. Where does John 12 have it? Same equivalent. The fifth year of seals. And look at what it says. Let's go back to John chapter 12. This is all about the seed and what this seed is supposed to do. Okay? Verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of what? A corn. What is a corn? A seed. A seed or grain, okay? This is talking specifically about wheat. Well, of course it's talking about wheat. There it is. So unless a grain or a seed of wheat, listen to this, fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth, look at this, it's going to carry, bear, lead, bring much fruit ready for this as plucked as plucked what is the word g726 <clears throat> harpazo this is pluck this is the was raptured which means there's going to be seeds as we just saw that started in romans 9 that actually started earlier in romans that brought us to Psalms 22, that showed us that the seed is a group of people in the is to come that will be the ones to what? Fall and die. And where are they? Where was the connection to it in, in John? In the chapters to years, there they were in the fifth seal under the altar, those that have been killed for the name and for the word of God. How do you know? Look at this. Uh, a, a corn of wheat that must fall to the ground and die to bring forth much fruit. So this corn of wheat, this group of people who are the seed of wheat, who are going to fall to the ground and die, are going to bring forth what fruit? What harpazo? What as plucked? Let me show you. You guys know this. This is awesome. Right here in Genesis chapter 8, we've showed it so many times. This is a beautiful big picture of of the end of days at the end of 40 days there's your 40 days of the son of man the raven goes out with three days left in the 50 <clears throat> then the dove goes out at the 50th day finds no rest for the sole of her feet she goes back she's taken into the ark and then you have what stayed seven other days that's a picture of seven days as years so what is this stayed well you guys all know it means pain sorrow it means tribulation this one just means wait so they don't have that same definition for anybody that hadn't seen that before. So this is a picture of the first seven years. So you had the 50 days that came first. You had the breakdown of the 50 days. Then the 50 days are over. The seven and the seven begin. And when the seven comes to an end, so in that seventh year, what happens? The dove goes out again and look at what it says. Lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off plucked off let me go to the greek again okay let's go back to the greek just so you could see it as plucked what's the hebrew word plucked plucked off and when it says an olive leaf look at what it is it's actually a branch so it could be a leaf or a branch in this case we know it's a branch <laughs> because what does it relate to the great multitude rapture the 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 wild olive branch that you're going to see as we go further in to the book of Romans, who are the Gentiles, who are the wild olive branch grafted in to the main true olive tree. Here they are plucked off, and the Greek word in the exact same timing is right there. So that means there's a group of people who are going to be the ones 
falling to the ground to bring forth more rapture people. The great multitude rapture people. Well, you guys will remember this. Who are these people? How many times have we gone through this, brothers and sisters? There is winter wheat and there is spring wheat. Most people never pay attention to the fact that there are two portions of wheat. And barley and winter wheat are planted in the fall and barley starts to grow first in the spring and then the winter wheat starts to grow. Barley starts its harvest early spring, goes through to late spring, maybe even into the early summer, and winter wheat starts to get harvested right towards the tail end of the barley harvest. They kind of overlap a little bit. And then it goes to the end of the winter wheat harvest. You see, those are the two that Ruth talks about until the end of the barley and wheat harvest. But we also know that there is another wheat harvest, which is called spring wheat. The winter wheat are all those who are pre-trib. They are all the pre-trib. The winter wheat group is everybody pre-trib in Christ's spirit filled. We've covered it many times. They're the picture of Leah compared to Rachel. Winter wheat is called old wheat and spring wheat is called new wheat. There's the Hebrew terms kadosh and yoshon for them. I can't remember which is which though. So winter wheat is old, spring wheat is new. It doesn't mean it's old and dead or anything like that. It's just the definition of it because when it's planted. And what happens is winter wheat is planted and when it's harvested in summer, it can be used right away because it took root before Passover. Whereas spring wheat, isn't planted until spring after Passover. So it doesn't take root until after Passover. So when it's harvested in late summer, early fall, it cannot be used till the following Passover. That is spring wheat who is represented as the great multitude rapture portion. Okay? Pre-trib, winter wheat, old wheat, which is a picture of Leah, who was the older before the younger, which is a picture of the spring wheat. And that is the one that is harvested in the middle of the seventh year of seals. You guys that have been around for a while, you all know this. Well, let's follow this context of what's taking place here. Okay, what is it saying? Except a corn of wheat fall, which means this worker group who are a part of the pre-trib winter wheat, who are being chosen as that remnant remaining bride portion to serve the Lord as that seed, are going to be the wheat, these seeds of wheat that are going to fall to the ground and die so that they could bring forth much fruit, which is what? The rapture group. So what is this saying? The only way is if wheat dies, what do you think comes up from this fruit? Wheat. So you have seeds of wheat being planted or that being crushed and dying, and they're bringing forth much fruit of what? Grapes? No. Wheat. Because these guys are part of the winter wheat, and they're helping to bring in spring wheat. This is the Leia. Gentile type older before the younger. And it's the worker portion of them that are these guys bringing in these guys who are literally the ones plucked harpazo. It's awesome. It's awesome. Now, here's something we haven't shared in a long time. Check this out. What happens sometimes with winter wheat? Are you ready for this? Winter wheat is grown as a cash crop or a cover crop, which means winter wheat isn't always a cash crop, but sometimes parts of it are cover crop. Cash crop is what? Something paid for, purchased by another party. These are both 
the winter wheat pre-trib group. This one that represents the cash crop are those going to the third heaven that are at the wedding feast. And this is the cover crop are those chosen to remain to serve and put their necks on the line and die as that wheat that's playing out as the cover crop. Check this out. You see what cover crop does, guys? Cover crop, instead of harvesting all of the winter wheat, or sometimes even just whole fields of a, of a winter wheat, they just mow it down. They mow it down so that it covers what is being planted next and what's coming up next under it. It brings it more nutrients, more, more, you know, it, it, look at this. Cover crops manage soil erosion, soil fertility, soil quality, water, seeds, pest, and disease. On and on and on. That's what these cover crops do. These cover crops are exactly the story of what Jesus is telling us here in John chapter 12. They are the ones who will put their necks on the line. And it just so happens that John chapter 12 is the timing of the fifth seal for those who died to help what? Bring forth much fruit. Now, guess what? <laughs> Wait until you see as this keeps going, man. Because you say, well, how, is, how are they going to bring forth? You see, I didn't even have that question until I found something as I was continuing on into Romans is that if these guys are dying along the way, how are they the ones bringing in much fruit? Right? How are they bringing in the fruit if they're the ones that are dying as, as, as cover crop? You'll remember this, guys. Let's go to John chapter 4. I think we can understand this now. You ready for this? John 4, 35. Say ye not, there are yet four months, then comes the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look for the fields. Uh, look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Listen to this. And he that reapeth, receiveth wages. And gathereth fruit. And what? And gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that sows and he that reaps may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. Hello. I sent you to reap, listen to this, I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored and ye entered into their labors. What is this saying? What is this saying, guys? This is not pre-trib. It has nothing to do with pre-trib. This is about the mid-trib rapture. It is the story of the harvests. And in this story of the harvest, listen to what it said. He that reapeth receives wages, and he that gathereth fruit unto and, and gathereth fruit unto eternal life, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. So somebody sows and somebody reaps. Well, what did it say down here? I sent you to reap that thereon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored. So there were there were other men that sowed. And there's other ones going in, entering in to reap it. Who are the ones called other men labored? They're the seed. They're the ones who put their necks on the line. They're the cover crop. They're the ones from Luke 12 who will die to bring forth the great multitude rapture. The harpazo, the as plucked. But if they're dead, or majority of them are dead, how are they bringing them in? They're not. There's another group that are entering into the labors of those who worked seals. Who are the ones doing it? Well, 
we know that answer now too, don't we? We go to Revelation chapter 7, and who do we see before the great multitude rapture, which is the as plucked harpazo? The 144,000. The 144,000 are the ones who enter into the labor of those who worked seals, but died, and in their dying as cover crop, brought forth a great multitude. And these guys are the ones entering in to bring them to the mountain of the Lord, to, to ready them, to, to bring them in to the great multitude rapture, which we know is to paradise. I told you, this kind of just goes everywhere, right? Another sip of coffee. All right. It's so much fun, man. This, the details of this, they just go on and on and on. Let's keep going. Here it is right here. Let me show you a great example right here. Uh, let's go, duh, 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 duh. Uh, let's just start in Romans. Let's continue in Romans 11, just to build on it. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. We kind of get a same kind of context as we did in Psalms 22, didn't we? We have this context of, you know, coming in the future that shall come. Now listen to verse 12. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. The elder shall serve the younger. Now, we know this was a Jacob Esau, but the typology is all throughout. What is this a picture of? We just spoke about it. It's a picture of Leah and Rachel. Leah is the elder. Rachel is the younger. What is the picture of this? What is the prophetic underlining in this? Is the elder, who is the winter wheat Leah type, is the remnant one who remains to work to what? Serve the younger to bring in the Rachel portion. Hello. It's the picture of winter wheat called older and spring wheat called younger. It is the winter wheat cover crop serving to bring in the new wheat, spring wheat, in the great multitude rapture as the plucked. You see how crazy this is? This is the story coming from seed. Connected to John, connected to Psalms, connect, I mean, and through the rest of Romans. A group of people chosen to serve from the first group to serve the second group. But they're both wheat. They have to be. They're just two different portions of wheat. It's so awesome. Let's see where else we're going here. Let's see where else. Oh, yeah, right? There's another good one. Watch where this one led. So in 1 Corinthians, was this the one? Oh, no, that's another one coming. That one is awesome. 1 Corinthians 15, 36. We get the same story here again about this grain of wheat, right? 15.36. Listen to this. In 1 Corinthians 15.36, let's start right here. It says, Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest Thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, meaning, you know, just naked, just the grain. It may chance of wheat or some other grain. So there, there's also in what you're doing there, there, you're bringing in the great multitude spring wheat harvest. But there's probably going to be Jews along the way. You see, not everything's going to be exactly the same, but the focus is the wheat. Because seals is still the time of the Gentiles. They're the ones going to help bring in the great multitude, which is to the fullness of the Gentiles. Who are the ones doing it? 
Who are the ones doing it? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. Is not quickened except it die. What is the word quickened? To revitalize, to make alive. So the only way you can sow is if you die to help bring in a greater multitude. Maybe, just maybe, that explains why in Revelation chapter 20, those who are resurrected to rule and reign with the Lord for a thousand years are called what? In Revelation 20 verse 5, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So this is a group that has part in the first resurrection. Who were they? The souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus Christ. They didn't take the mark. They didn't worship the beast. None of those things. No, no, no mark or anything, right? They're the ones from Revelation chapter 6, the fifth seal. It's the exact same context to those who are the seeds who are the cover crop. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. So the ones, these guys. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. They'll be his priests and reign with him, with Christ for a thousand years. We know who these people are, but we're going to save that for a little further into it. For those that are new. We know who this group is, and it's the exact same group every time. It connects to Luke chapter 2 in, in, the, in the Luke in order. It connects to Romans every single time. It's the seven churches in the church that it should be. Let's go back. You see? So what is it saying again? You must be what? You have to die if you're going to be revitalized. The only ones that are going to be revitalized and made alive on this earth are the ones that will rule and reign with him for a thousand years. With the exception, of course, of those who were part of the promise. Okay? We know there are those who are part of the promise like Daniel and Abraham and, and all those guys, right? All the ones that were part of the promise and, you know, and, and Israel, right? Judah, you know, the Israelites in general that were told that never got to see it right that told they, they the promise is coming so look at that you can't be quickened unless you die who were all the ones there with the lord they were all the ones being resurrected so they all had to die now when we see it in um in uh da, 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 in the seven churches when we go to Smyrna, we see the sum of you, okay? There, there's a sum of you, but there might be more to it. And you'll see what I mean as we get further into Romans. But you can clearly see the entire storyline is, is this worker remnant group who's a part of the other group, but is chosen to stay and to remain. Uh, where was I? Uh, chosen to stay and remain, uh, starting in or continuing in Romans 9, 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. This is pretty wild stuff. Now, here's the thing for us. When you read something like that, you're like, well, then I don't have any effect. It's the Lord's will anyways. I, either he's going to save this person or he's not going to save that person. No. You see, we're still living in the is where are those who are the seeds who are got to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and go share the word like Steve and others here are doing and going and spreading the word and talking to people in lines and so forth. Because we're still in the is of this happening. And here's the thing. You don't know who's going to be saved and who is. Only the Father does. 
You see? He can do when he wants, what he wants, where he wants, with who he wants, how he wants. You see? But we don't know what that is. So we can only share. That's the, that's the, the mystery we'll never get. It's all in him. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh. Now remember, he's, he's saying, you know, he said this unto Moses. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will hardeneth. That's kind of hard to, to accept, right? He's going to have mercy on who he wants. He'll harden who he wants and he'll use those hardened or whoever he wants for whatever purpose he chooses. That's because he's God. <laughs> he's, we can't understand that, obviously. But you see the context that I'm getting at? He's talking about with Moses. He's talking about the time with Pharaoh. What is the picture of seals? The picture of seals is the picture of Moses and them fleeing in the time of Moses, right? When did they flee? The time of Passover? It's the abomination of desolation picture that you're getting in this, in this portion of Romans 9. All of it is connected from the beginning, just before the beginning, at the above 50, to the end of seals. It's the continuous picture of seals of a remnant group taking, a group remaining, and the time of seals till they're rescued. And it only gets more detailed. Verse 21. Oh, wait till we keep going. Wait till 23. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Right? I mean, it's all throughout here in Romans. Nothing we can do about it except share the truth and let the Spirit make known and open the hearts and eyes and ears of those the Father wills. What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Now hold on to your hats. Verse 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of of his mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Now, that is a mouthful, and you'll understand some of it if you've watched the first video. Listen to this. And that he might make known. Now, for anybody that's new as well, this program that I'm using, it's free or maybe a couple bucks, few bucks a year. I'm not affiliated with it at all, but I promote it to everybody. It's called eSword, and you can download KJV Plus and a whole bunch of different Bible versions. I just recommend you go to KJV Plus. That's all you need. But, I mean, KJV, but there's KJV Plus. And the Plus gives you all of the word definitions. So you can go dig in to the root words, the meaning of the words, where they lead. It is so vital, and it's going to blow your mind. That This is what really helps to explode your understanding in Scripture, is understanding the meanings of the words. So in 23, it says, And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Well, who do you think he's talking about? Who is he going to make known the riches of his glory on vessels that are his in mercy? that before the foundation of the earth, he had already prepared to glory. That's what it's saying. Now let's look at it with detailed clarity. That he might make known, look at this, to give understanding. That he might make known, so that, that he might give understanding of his riches in glory. Well, we remember glory, don't we? Remember the last one? Connected to the dignity, those who are part of the dignity, the, 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 the glorious, right? 
the glory with the Lord who are co-heirs with him. Those who are willing to suffer with him so that they could be glorified together with him at the end. We just saw who that group was in Romans 20. So who's the group he makes understanding known to? That he's going to give understanding to? I can hear already a bunch of you. I could hear your thoughts saying, we already know that one, Alan. It's the same group we know very well in Luke 24. The picture of the two on the road to Emmaus when he says that he's going to open their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. You see, this conversation that happens all throughout here is different than when he came in the one that you read in Mark. It's different than the other synoptic in Matthew. It's crazy. This is the only group he does that with, where he says he's now going to open unto them their understanding. So that's one piece. He, he's going to open their understanding. That's one piece. And we know that this group is that cover crop, is that worker remnant portion of the, of the pre-trib bride. And he's going to give them the riches of his glory, which we discussed in the last video, we know is connected to light. Because they're going to help bring in the light portion. So these are spirit-filled, and they're going to help bring in the light portion. So in the end, what are they going to do? They're going to have the dignity with Christ in, in, the, uh, uh, in, in his glory, right, as co-heirs with them ruling and reigning with them so what do we see next in his glory uh, of his glory on vessels ready for this specifically a wife as contributing to the usefulness of the husband who are these vessels clearly a bride portion now is there a way you can look at this even in the now right in the is so we're talking prophetic this is the ministry that's revealing the open books in the layer of understanding in the is to come but in the is think of everybody going pre-trib those who are speaking for christ those who are sharing christ they're the ones that are going pre-trib but of them, there's a portion who are his remnant bride who are going to contribute to his usefulness. I didn't even realize this was there. I might have clicked on it from something else in, in some other part of Scripture in these 23 places where it's found, but it had never dawned on me that this connection was the one in Romans 9.23. Well, let's keep going. On the vessels of his mercy. So he's going to make known the revelation, the understanding of the is to come on his vessels, his remnant bride workers, which he had a for, meaning preordained, for prepared, for new, prepared unto glory. Now, when I first saw this prepared unto glory, I looked at it and i thought oh this is that prepare that we know relates to the mark portion so this is probably john as the picture as the one of the typologies of this bride portion worker this is the typology of this place being prepared right of john preparing a people for when the lord comes at the end of seals that was my initial thought until i clicked on it because this entire conversation has nothing to do with the rapture group. This is a conversation in verse 23 about a group who are his chosen vessels, a portion of his, of his bride that remain where he's going to make known to them the riches of his glory, who will receive the riches of that glory and will go out as the cover crop to bring about the great multitude harvest. 
So this isn't the great multitude harvest. These are the remnant worker brides. So now, with that understanding, let's see what this word prepared means. Ta-da. A word only used twice in Scripture. You see, this is an, a perfect example of why a program like ESORT or having your Strong's Concordance at your fingertips is so important. Because if you didn't know that, you would look at this prepared, another prepared, that prepared, this prepared, and you would just think, ah, it just means prepared. Nope. This prepared is different than all the rest of them. It's only used twice. And I'm going to show you something so awesome in where it's connected that once again, I say that just about every video, once more, and once again, once again, here it comes again. Every time a piece of revelation comes to be made known and we go to look up and search where it's connected, it always falls in the chapters, in the places, in the understanding of the revelation of the is to come where it should. So where would be a place that this conversation where he's with a group of his Gentile bride workers who were remaining to be with him, that he's making known, that he's sharing his riches and glory on them, that he foreknew and prepared wouldn't that be during the 40 days of the Son of Man? When he's literally with the Luke 24, Smyrna group, those who put their necks on the line for the house uh, for the churches of the Gentiles? To help bring in the great multitude rapture, which is the fullness of the Gentiles? Well, let's go see. Let's go see where the other one shows up. Watch this. Luke chapter 2. Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. That was something else. That was something else. <laughs> Let's go see where this one is. Oh, I was building it up, and then I went to the wrong one. Okay, let me see where it is. In Ephesians 2.10. Now listen to this. Man, we've got so much good stuff. Ephesians 2.10. Even more is coming. Watch this. Starting in verse 8. Ephesians 2, verse 8 through 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, with God hath, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Who are you seeing here again? There's the is of those in Christ who are what? Foreordained to good works, to go and spread the word of Christ. What's the is to come? It's the only other place where this one, foreordained in advance, is used, and it's about a worker portion going out in the is to come there's the is of it of course but then there's the is to come of it let's keep going it get it gets much better i had i had gotten ahead of myself on that one let's keep going because we are going to get to luke chapter three all right so, Romans, Romans 9, 24, even as whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So what you're seeing here is, again, something that we were able to confirm already in Acts chapter 15. Let's go to Acts chapter 15 real quick. Acts chapter 15, remember uh, Acts is 14 years or 14 chapters and 14 chapters. And it's about this council and it's, it's the Gentiles and that the Gentiles are these disciple workers. 
that they were they were ordained they uh, uh, they were anointed they were they were a part of this group and now there, there's a conversation while saying well maybe we maybe we shouldn't accept these guys and like no these guys were a part of it they did many things they were witnesses to the lord as well it's another confirmation that these disciple workers are gentiles and they are bringing in the gentile great multitude listen who comes in but also of the gentiles as he saith also in osi i will call them my people which were not my people and her beloved which was not my beloved okay we know this one right we know it quite well now let me show you in luke chapter 3 this incredible connection that we get what do we know about luke chapter 3 in luke chapter 3 we know sir give me a second here i need to see six all right six and seven. there we go i had i was changing all the colors on this and i'm i'm having to say no no that wasn't that color it's like my memory i, I knew there were certain colors and i've changed them today so we see um why did i have this here already so before we get to uh luke chapter three i it see the way i had it lined up i was i put it in the wrong spot i had it on the other side of something instead of behind it so we all know this one we've covered this before in relation to uh romans 9 24 uh but also of the gentiles and in 925 when it talks about osi and he saith also in osi i will call them my people which were not my people and her beloved which was not my beloved so what are you seeing here in osi which is hosea and hosea means the deliverer we're seeing the deliverer who are you seeing here in this deliverer you're seeing a people which were not my people and her beloved which was not my beloved so you're seeing a portion and a portion that's the that's his beloved bride you see a gentile people a gentile portion of a bride and another group of people we've covered this a lot in relation to it let's go to hosea chapter one uh, for those that are new, you're going to see that there's only two pieces, uh, uh, two, gospel, um, two books in the Bible, Hosea and Zechariah, that each have 14 chapters. There is a prophetic purpose and reasoning to them. And Hosea, as we just read in Romans 9, is to the Gentiles. Hosea is speaking to the Gentiles. Zechariah is speaking to the Jews. And what do we see in Hosea 1, verse 2? The beginning, the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said unto Hosea, what's his name? Deliverer. Okay, what does deliverer mean? Yeshua. Yeshua, salvation. Okay. Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. Now, what does that mean? We've talked about this many times over the past. It doesn't mean they're a bunch of prostitutes. It's, it's an expression of Gentiles, okay? Adultery. So, uh, um, whore, whoredom, uh, dogs, right? These are things that refer to Gentiles. So, we know it's not against us, right? It's, it's a term that was used for Gentiles. In fact, we just proved it. All you have to do is well you can you can even go to read about ruth you can go to ruth chapter two or chapter three and click on when she says and me being a stranger why are you having mercy on me or showing me such kindness on me a stranger the word stranger means adulteress so when you're reading it here if it was really derogatory and not meant to be gentiles why did it say in verse 24 of romans 9 even us whom he hath called not of the jews only but also of the gentiles and then go on to say, as he says also in Osi, I will call them my people which were not my people, and her my beloved which was not my beloved. 
it's because hosea is speaking to the gentiles and gentiles even though it says whoredom is simply a reference like dogs okay that's that's all it means it seems like it's pretty brutal but what do we see a group of people and a bride this is his picture of his gentile bride this was more so for newer people that hadn't understood that before it's something we've covered many times uh over the years a while back in fact just for somebody new i'm just going to show you real quick i don't like people just saying oh i'm going to take his word for it i'm going to show you uh it's in chapter two in ruth chapter two everybody knows that studies a bit of scripture that ruth is a picture of the gentile bride right boaz is the king's kinsman redeemer and in ruth chapter 2 verse 10 it says then she fell on her face and bowed herself down to the ground and said unto him why have i found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me seeing i am a stranger see foreigner non-relative adulteress essentially it means gentile and she was a gentile you see so it doesn't mean i mean people over the years really got bent out of shape out of that but it, it tells you that right in the verse before that it was gentiles all right so let's keep going watch this in 9 26 and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them you are not my people there shall they be called the children of the living god isaiah also crieth concerning israel though the number of the children of israel be as the sand of the sea a remnant shall be saved now this remnant isn't the remnant we're talking about meaning the the remnant bride portion that's working this is about a remnant being saved at the end okay and we know this by going to follow the story in isaiah chapter 40 where it's found so what is the context here what's the context taking place that there's a group of people being saved at the end of this what what period of time is the end of this well it's the end of seals it's this connection to the great multitude rapture so let's go to chapter 40 and see exactly what it's talking about it's connected here in verse 10 but we're going to start back here in isaiah 40 verse 2 speak ye comfortably to jerusalem and cry unto her uh, that her warfare is accomplished and that her iniquity is pardoned for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. Here it is. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway of God. Now hold on a second. Who's the one that prepares the way? John. John is a picture of the time of seals. <laughs> we know he's a picture of those that that are beheaded during seals. We know that Elijah is a type of those that will be alive at the end of seals, whereas the others are dead. So when we go to places that we know are in order, we should be able to find this timing of John, who's the one that prepared the way. So you can see why I went to prepared with the other one, right? Because what we're seeing in this prepared in Romans that we saw, that preparation was a group of people who are the remnant workers being prepared to go about and do their thing. And we saw that even in where it was in the connection in Ephesians, to go out and do their things, just like it, it, it happened in the is, it will happen in the is to come. But this one is more specific to John the Baptist who prepared the way, who we know is a picture of those workers who have prepared the way and reunite them towards the end of seals, dying along the way, the ones that were beheaded, so that the 144 will go into those labors and bring the great multitude in. So what if we go and look to see where this conversation is happening in Isaiah 40, verse 3? Let's just start with that before we continue into the rest of this portion of Isaiah. <clears throat> what's the context of this time 
the context of the time, well, we know something really well here, which is Luke in order. And in Luke in order, chapter three is the picture of him coming in that seventh year of seals. At the beginning of the seventh year of seals, he's now here. And look at what we see. Where is he? Where is he? Uh, in Luke chapter 3, verse 2, Ananias and Caiaphas, being the high priest, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. In verse 4, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. So we know this is the end of the sixth year of seals. We know this is into that seventh year of seals, right? Or the end of the sixth year of seals and the start of the seventh year of seals is starting. We know he's prepared the way. We've been able to break this down in Luke in order. We've got a video, I think, called Luke in order. You'll just have to search through to find it. We know that this is Luke chapter one is a picture of the pre-trib. Then after eighth day, at, at the eighth day, after seven day wedding on the eighth day, you have the 40 days of the son of man and the picture of his birth. This in chapter three is a picture of the end of seals when he, when he comes at the end of six years and he's here to fulfill that final year. And chapter four is the end of the sixth year of trumpets when the Lord comes and it's the time of the crushing of the grapes when Satan will tempt him because Satan had the, the second portion of trumpets when the pit was open and everything else. So we understand this prepared the way, right? We've talked about this and where we see this in, um, in Mark is the Last Supper, right? In the Last Supper, we see this right here that in Mark 14, verse 15, because when you understand who the gospels are speaking to, you understand the timing of each portion and why the words are worded differently. So it says in Mark 14, 15, and he will show you a large upper room. We've covered this not too long ago. This large upper room is a place above ground. It's only used twice because it relates to the kingdom of God. One is the pre-trib in Luke and it's used in Luke's story just like this and in Mark's. It's a picture of this place prepared up above which is where the pre-trib goes to the third heaven and where the rapture group goes to the mid-trib going to paradise. They're both part of the kingdom of God and they're above the ground. So that's why you see this exact same wording in Luke's, but you don't see it in Matthew's. These are part of those reasons, those differences, right? And look at what it says, furnished and prepared. Mark's is the only one that has the word prepared because it is a picture. It is a prophetic embedding filled in the is to come, giving us understanding, detail in the is to come. So when we go back to Luke chapter three and we see this word prepared, which is again, it goes to the same root word. You see, prepared. There's the one that was found in Mark and only in Mark in that story. We find this same story in Isaiah chapter 40. So when we go to Isaiah chapter 40, it's not hard for us to understand what period of time this is. You know, is, was it talking pre? Is it talking mid? Is it talking post? It's talking mid. It's talking the end of the sixth year of seals to the seventh year. Well, now look at what happens. It says, we go down into Luke chapter three, verse six, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. You see, they don't all see God. They're, they're not gonna all see him. Remember, this is when he's coming in the clouds in Mark's discourse. All flesh is going to see that coming. That's why at the end of the sixth seal, they're all screaming, rocks all fall on us, hide us, mountains fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb for the time of his wrath has come. <clears throat> so wait until you see what we're going to find in this. But it says in Luke 3, 6, 
and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. They're going to see the salvation of God. They're not going to see God. They're going to see the salvation. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come. See this word for wrath? This is the one properly desire. G3709. Check it out. You can prove the timing by going into the understanding of these word definitions. We go to Revelation chapter 6. In verse 16, see, and said to the mountains and rocks, fallen us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is coming. Look at what the wrath is. Same one. What is this? The end of the sixth year of seals. What is Luke chapter three? The end of the six years of seals in the prophetic is to come that's hidden in it. And then listen to what it says. Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance. So now suddenly there should be a bringing forth of fruits worthy of repentance. What is this word for fruits? You guessed it. The rapture group, the plucked harpazo in the seventh year, uh, at the start of the seventh year, remember what happens at the end of the seventh year, it is the time of the rapture, but it's going to take until Passover before that wheat, quote unquote, can be used. What do you think they're going to be doing during that time? Maybe there's maybe there's uh, you know what is this harpazo you know is it is it just a rapture i mean they're going to paradise well we just saw the lord is coming down on paradise so if he's coming on heavenly mount zion and everybody's got to flow to the mountain what what is the what is the was raptured what's it actually going to look like i don't know but we know that at the end of that 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 battle that takes place at the end of the sixth seal which is the Ezekiel 39 war, we know that Ezekiel 39 says, then they'll be burying the bones, right? They'll be burying the dead for seven months. Well, that's pretty interesting because it's about seven months, give or take, to the time of the when that wheat can be used. So it's pretty interesting, but it gets better. Let's go back to verse six, because remember, how did we get to this connection? We got to this connection because of Romans nine, talking about Isaiah and crying in the wilderness. That brings us to where he said that in Isaiah chapter 40, that then brings us to Luke chapter three. All of this then should be telling us this group coming in at the end of seals at the mid-trib great multitude rapture. Now listen to this. Verse 6 of Luke 3. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Check this out. Here we are again. Remember what I said, how important it is to have a program, a software program, or a, a program with the ability to see the concordance? This word for salvation, brothers and sisters, is only used five times. 49.92 in the Greek. Let's go have a look. Here it is right here. Okay? Here it is right here. This is how I found also this connection going to Isaiah. Chapter 40, verse 5. We're going to get to it. Look at this salvation. I want you guys to notice something right off the bat. It's only used twice in Luke. Look at what it says here. Pay close attention. In Luke 3, 6, where we just were, it says, shall see. Shall see the salvation of God. Look at what Luke 2, 3 says. Remember what we know about Luke being in order for those that have been around for a little bit? Look at what Luke 2 says. Have seen. 
have seen. This isn't any old salvation. This is the salvation of what? He's a defender. This is Christ. They're going to see the salvation, the defender salvation of God. Who are the ones that shall see? All flesh. All those that are going to be there and saying, rocks and mountains fall on us. Why? Because he is bringing his, um, uh, what were we saying? He's bringing his wrath. So they're freaking out. Because he's coming as the defender of his people. If we go to Luke chapter 2, and these are the ones that shall see. So in the prophetic, it's those who are going to see it at the end of the, at the mid-trib time, at the end of the sixth year of seals. But when you go to this word salvation, and we find it in the only other gospel place where in order we've understood. And where was it? Let me look at that again. Verse 30. Who are the ones here in verse 30, guys? Who are the ones? Let's have a read, it, starting from verse 28. Then took he him in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Didn't we just go into this in the first video on the first half of Romans? And this 40-day period, which we know is Christ, the light who's coming to shed his light. And what is he going to do? We were saying it earlier. He is going to give that light when he gives it to the understanding of that remnant bride portion workers who are going to put their necks on the line and be the cover crop to bring in the next great multitude wheat harvest. They're going to be the nutrients, the life, the cover. They're going to be the ones spreading the Lord's light who they will receive from the Son of Man while he's here for 40 days. And what's the picture? Have seen thy glory or thy salvation. Have seen. Why on earth, if that was a have seen, why would this one be shall see? Well, we know the understanding in the is. One was at his birth and represented of 40 days. And the other is represented of what? When he came in that final year when John was still there until John was then beheaded. And then what? He began his ministry. Hello. What's the picture of this? It's the final year of seals. And when the final year of seals is done, John's portion is finished. And then, right, the, be the beheadings are done. And what happens? Jesus, as the lamb, as the high priest and king, ruling and reigning with the branch, one is high priest who is the highest one, directing communication with the father, and the branch who's rebuilding the temple. Because the Lord has about three and a half years of his ministry to finish. You're going to see it even in the wording as we keep going. It's even brought up. And it was a sister that shared it with us when we get to Romans 11. I mean, uh, yeah, Romans 11. We see the rapture group coming in. We see that they're hiding. You see, who warned you from the wrath to come? There's the wrath coming at the end of the sixth seal. Here the guys are coming. And who told you, who warned you about it? Now it's time to what? Bring those rapture people who were worthy of repentance. From all those who what? shall see the ones who are going to have seen the salvation of the Lord when he comes as defender, whereas Luke chapter 2 is telling us there was a group connected to the 40 days that have already seen it. 
You get it? Are you following it? Take your time if you need to. Rewind and rewatch. Pay attention. Listen to it again. Because it's awesome. Let's keep going. Let's go back to where we were with where this had taken us in Isaiah chapter 40. Let's see that this is still all the same time. Okay? Uh, verse 3 was the crying in the wilderness. Verse 4, every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain. The glory, there's the glory again, of the Lord shall be revealed. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh, see that? Shall see it together. Who's being revealed here, guys? What is this portion of his revealing? Well, let's go have a look. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7. You guys remember this one? Daniel chapter 7. There's the lion, the bear, the leopard. Then you've got the beast who's going to... This is when uh, about two and a half years into seals, when the 14 years start. This is the stamping the residue. This is, this is the abomination of desolation. It'll be the time of the mark of the beast going after Christians. This is when the beast gets that power and authority to continue 42 months. Then when those 42 months are done, it's the end of the sixth year of seals. We see the Ancient of Days. His throne was like a fire. You see, this is the Father. There's the thousands of thousands ministered unto him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. Who are they? These were the ones that went pre-trib. These are the Gentiles. And I would say these are probably the Jewish believers, the thousands of thousands. <coughs> and what do we know happens? The beast is killed and the rest have their dominions taken away. So this is the, this is the um, uh, 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 Ezekiel 39 war. And Antichrist is killed. And the rest had their powers taken away, their authority, their, their dominions taken away. And then what happens? Go to verse Daniel 7, verse 13. One like unto the Son of Man came with the clouds, like Matthew, I mean like Mark 13. Um, one like unto the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. You see? Came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days and they did, and, and they brought him near before him and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve. This is the end of seals. This is that time when we know he's going to make a covenant, which, of course, will then have to be broken at mid-trumpets. There he is. Let's go back to Isaiah 40. Let's keep going through this. Uh, when he'll be revealed. You're going to see this in other places too. When he's going to be revealed and all flesh shall see him. So if they're all crying out at the end of the sixth seal, because... They're seeing uh, the one who sits on the throne and the wrath of the Lamb. They're crying, oh, oh, for the wrath of the Lamb has come. We see in, in Daniel 7, when the beast is destroyed and, and the rest taken, their dominion taken away, we know that this is Psalms 90 and 10, when he's the high priest and king. Uh, we know from Zechariah, it's when he's high priest and king, and he's there ruling jointly with the branch, who is the, the portion of Jesse that, that through David, it's it's all there. It's all the same timing. Let, let's confirm it. Let's keep going. Isaiah 40, verse 9. O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem. Get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings. So if we remember, who are the ones that are going to go up the high mountain? Well, if we go to Psalms 24, we see this period. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This is a picture of the fullness of the Gentiles at the end of the sixth seal. Verse 3, who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. So who's going to go up to ascend? Who's going to get to go in to the hill of the Lord? 
at the time of the fullness of the Gentiles. Who are they going to be the ones that are going to go up to the high mountain that have good tidings that they're bringing with them? Isn't that exactly what we were reading in Luke in Luke 3? Those who are what? Let's go see it real quick. I forgot the exact wording. Who are the ones, the same, the ones with good tidings? What is it? The ones who are worthy of repentance. The rapture group who are worthy of repentance. The ones with good tidings. All of this. Let's finish up in Isaiah 40 and this, this connection going on. Showing us, again, this picture of the end of seals. Lift up thy voice with strength. With strength, Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Isaiah 40, verse 10. Behold, the Lord will come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him. And, comma, and, listen to this. His work is before him. His work is before him. If this was the end of trumpets, his work wouldn't be before him. When we understand with John and we understand these connections and this timing and him coming on, on heavenly Mount Zion, the mountain of the Lord, and you see that he has work still to do before him, all of it's telling us that seventh year of seals. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs in his arm and carry them in his bosom, and they shall gently lead those that are with young. All the end of seals. When he's revealed. When he's revealed in the clouds. Remember, there's going to be more to it. He's going to be high priest and king at that point. Whoops. He's going to be high priest and king. In fact, oh, see, that was the spirit. <laughs> you saw it, it all just went, uh, it highlighted and went and brought me down to this verse because I forgot this was another piece I wanted to share. Let me give you another piece to show you it's the end of seals. The end of the sixth year. Uh, Isaiah 40, verse 17. All nations before him are as nothing. Who are all the nations before him? Well, we know it's the Ezekiel 39 war. At the end of the six year seals, we know from second Esdras, it's this one right here. Uh, every man shall leave uh, his own land in the warfare they had against one another. And an innumerable multitude shall gather together as you saw desiring to come to conquer him. But he shall stand on top of Mount Zion. Well, wait a second. That's not Mount of Olives. You see, because this is the end of seals and Zion will come to be made manifest to all people the mountain carved without hand that becomes a great mountain and look at it prepared and built just like the mark group prepared and built you see so what are all these people to him what did it say all nations before him are as nothing and they are counted to him less than nothing that sounds pretty brutal doesn't it when we think of our loving God, you know, everybody's like, you know, marshmallows and, and lollipops. And, and he is very merciful right now. But at the end of seals, it, it's going to get rough. It's already going to be rough with the enemy attacking. But when the Lord comes as what? What is he coming as at the end of seals? The defender. So he's going to destroy all those that came against his people. And they're going to be as nothing, just poof. It's the Ezekiel 39 war. And listen to what the time frame is. So they are less than nothing and vanity. Who do we know, guys, who represents the vain, the vanity portion? Mark's group. Mark's group. The portion in life that that fell, that that didn't that that were skewed by Lucifer in the portion of the creation of light of days. We covered it in the last video. It's the mark portion. But which portion are they? 
the ones that get to go up the mountain? The ones that, that the lamb is going to bring into his arms like a shepherd, you know, bringing in his flock? No. They're the rest that refuse to come. The ones that remained in vain, vainness and vanity. Who are the ones that he's going to carry as a shepherd? Well, we even see that, don't we? In John, uh, where is it? Uh, where is it? I think it's 11. 11 or 10? 10? 10? Come on, 10. Is it 10? Yeah, there you go. You see, where he says in John 10, verse 1, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up by another way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. You see, when is he coming as the shepherd of the sheep? At the end of the sixth year of seals. He is coming to fulfill that seventh year of seals. Who's the one that's a robber and a thief? The Antichrist, the one coming to, to, to kill and destroy. So it's perfectly fulfilling that in John, who is also a chapters to years, chapter 8 is year 1, year 2 is 9. Chapter 10 is the third year, which is in the third year, which is about two and a half years in when the one coming to kill and destroy makes himself known. He gets power to continue. 42 months, the last three and a half years to the end of the sixth year of seals where the beast is then destroyed as we just read in Daniel chapter 7. I told you, man, this stuff is, it, it, it just keeps going. You see how we're still in Romans 9? <laughs> I told you. Romans 9. We're still in Romans 9. All right, so we were able to cover that. We saw the shall see. So again, when we go to Luke chapter 2, and we see the have seen, we know this is directly talking about this group of remnant worker brides who have seen the salvation and who are receiving the light, who are the ones sharing it and preparing the other ones as the Johns and the Elijahs. It's to see these things. It's just, I can understand why some people don't see it. I mean, you have to really have honed in understanding of this prophetic revelation, this prophetic opening of these things. It's awesome. Now, <laughs> listen to this one. Romans 9, verse 29. And Isaiah said before, except the Lord of the Sabbath had left us a seed. There it is again except the Lord of the Sabbath had left us a remnant seed. If this group of remnant workers, they're not this one here, this is a group that'll be saved later. If this seed, which is the remnant workers, that bride portion, if they had not been left, we had been as Sob Sob Sodom, Sodoma, and been made unlike uh, like unto Gomorrah. Well, isn't that interesting? So if there wasn't this remnant worker bride that remained to, to be his servant, that cover to bring in the great multitude rapture, they would have all been left and turned into like Sodom and Gomorrah. If it wasn't for the Lord's plan to bring about this worker remnant bride group to work during seals, they would have been toast. They would have been toast. There would have been nobody left to teach them and to wake them up. Everybody would be scattered, running around, doing their own thing, having no clue what's going on. Do you get it? This is how big a deal this worker group is. This is why there is so much detail on this mysterious worker group and seals. I mean, to us, it's not much of a mystery. But there's no way to really grasp it all unless you've been given the revelation of the open books. It's virtually impossible to see it. That's why for hundreds of years, everybody just kept talking about the 144,000. 
because this other group isn't easy to see. Clarity opens it up. So what does it mean that had this seed not been left, they would have been a Sodom? Well, let's go have a look and see what that means. Let's go to Luke chapter 17. We know there's this remnant worker bride and they're going to follow him what? Remember this? But first, here's the 40 days of the Son of Man. So before he comes as lightning from one end unto the other in his day, when he comes on the clouds, like Matthew 24, you have but first. So this is where it all begins when he comes for his 40 days. He must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. This means it is prophetically the final generation is the understanding there. And it actually is. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. This is about his 40 days. This is not the, the Matthew 24 days of Noah, which represents the final year of trumpets. It says they did eat, they drank, they married and, uh, uh, and were, uh, uh, they married wives and were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. So until what? The door shut. The 40 days of the Son of Man began. Well, look at what you see next in verse 28. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot. So this is another period of time. We know this is talking about the people during tribulation. What did it just say? Had we not had these remnant workers, we would have been as what? Well, let's see what it says. Luke 17, starting in 28. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, there it is, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Verse 30, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man, told you you'd see it again, is revealed. When is he revealed? At the end of seals. As the wrath of the Lamb is coming. What period of time? A period of time that will be like Sodom when these guys are taken out like Lot and his wife. What is this period of time that, that Romans just said, thank you for this remnant seed. Otherwise, we would have been as Lot. What period of time was it? They bought, they sold. Well, let's see if we can understand it. There's the buying, G59, and they sold. Greek word, G4453. Let's see if it has to do with the time of seals. Let's go to Revelation 13. We see this is when the beast gets the power over the lion, the bear, and the leopard. So it's your Antichrist when he gets his period to continue 42 months. We covered this in the last video, the, this portion of the saints that are there during that time. And look what happens when it comes to the mark of the beast. Remember that the ones that are dying during this time of the mark of the beast, which is during seals, the second half of seals, or from two and a half years into the end of the sixth year, we know that during their, that period, there are those who were beheaded for the testimony of the Lord, who refused his mark, which means during seals. What happens to those during seals? Well, to buy or sell, you need to have the mark or worship the beast and so forth. So Revelation 13, 17 says, and that no man might buy. There's your G59. Or sell, there's your G4453. Hello. It's the exact same wording, isn't it? Thank goodness for these people. Otherwise, we'd have been like Lot in this fiery brimstone raining down at the end of the sixth seal, destroying everybody. But had it not been for the Lord of the Sabbath who had left us the seed, we would have been as them. It's 
everywhere, guys. It's everywhere. Let's get, let's finish off uh, 930. This was the biggest one, so don't worry about it. We won't be uh, too, too much longer. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, but Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness? Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling, at the stumbling stone. Remember, the stumbling stone's coming for the 40 days. All right? The Lord is coming for, during the 40 days, and they're not going to believe it. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Okay? So a lot was covered there just in chapter 21. Uh, sorry, in chapter 21, I was looking at Luke, uh, in um, uh, Romans chapter 9, all right? So here again, when we're talking about this fullness of the Gentiles, as we did earlier, if we go to Luke chapter 21, we saw the, the fullness of the Gentiles at the end of the sixth seal in the typology of chapters to years in chapter 24. We know it's uh, here in Luke. So who is that group bringing in the Gentiles, that, that fullness of the Gentiles? Well, they're right here. It's the Luke group. It's those who, some of you, that shall be put to death, shall be caused to be put to death. We know this because this is during the 40 days, but then after when Jerusalem flees to the mountains, if they've taken the warning, and the 14 years begins with that destruction of Jerusalem on, uh, after the 50th day, what do we see happen? Uh, in Luke 21, when uh, actually in 22, after this warning that had been given to them to now flee before the attack after the 50th day, it says, for these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child and give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and they shall be led away captive unto all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Okay? The trotting down of the Gentiles is what happens during seals. Until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. So, clearly, this group is there and is representing, bringing in that portion during the time of seals, who are that seed, bringing in the great multitude rapture, which is the other wheat for which they were the cover for. It just continues over and over, deeper and deeper into it. What else do we got? We covered that with fruit, with fruit. Let me see if I had something else back here. I want to make sure I'm covering the other portions before I go to the next chapter. Luke chapter 2. Oh, yeah, check this one out. So this was in, this was, oh, this was the part. See, I knew it. I knew it. I got to go back and make this point in Romans chapter 9. I knew it. I knew there was a re I'm like, my mind knew it was there. What was I missing? Let's go back to this make known in Romans 9.23. You know what got me is because it was like this. It should have been up here. So, watch this. Remember I told you how important this was and I was building this all up, building this all up, and then it was like, Burr. it was because this right here. It wasn't the prepared. I was looking for the made known, not the prepared. Although the prepared is certainly great and it was part of it, it was the giving understanding that we talked about, that we know it's connected to the Luke 24 guys, but it's not only them because this isn't the exact same definition of the word of understanding in Luke chapter 24. But that's the only one where this understanding is being given. But watch this. There's a group that are going that uh, that he might make known uh, the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he hath prepared from afore prepared unto glory. 
So this made known is 1107. So for us to understand this, if it really is this 40-day group that is with the Lord for 40 days that he's doing this understanding to, <clears throat> that he's going to give his light to and everything else, then we should probably have some insight into it. This was the one I really wanted to share with you guys. This was the one that was mind-blowing when I saw it <clears throat> because it's all about the remnant worker bride. And the remnant worker bride should fall into a place where we know it applies within the end days revelation. And what is Luke chapter 2? Wasn't it fitting that the other portion of Luke chapter 2, for those who have seen, was in Luke chapter 2 from the other portion? And now the make known is only found in the synoptic gospels in Luke chapter 2. And when is it? At the beginning right here look at this let me let me make sure i've got the right verse verse 15 watch this so jesus is just born okay he's just born it's the same day he's in swaddling clothes and listen to this luke chapter 2 verse 15 and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven the shepherds who are the shepherds the workers they're they're the picture of the ones leading the sheep okay they're they're remember they are the ones who will receive the light of the lord who are receiving his understanding his glory so they are shepherds as christ and they're going to share in his glory that the shepherds said unto one another let us go even unto bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass which the lord hath made known unto us. It's the same one. Which the Lord hath made known unto us. Guys, this is the picture of the beginning of the 40 days that he had made known unto them. Another one, smack dab where it should be, and there is no confusion by seeing it in others of the synoptic gospels to say, well, it could be this, it could be that, but it's also there. No, it's only there. It's an exact picture of the beginning of the 40 days and those who will serve the Lord as the Luke 24, as the, as the Smyrna, as, the, as, as Priscilla's and Aquila's. But you want to see something else that's cool? The only other place it's found, or, uh, uh, sorry, the other place, the second place that it's found and where it's significant is in John 15. For those that have been around for a while and have been through this, remember John in order? What is the beginning of John 15? It's a picture of the start of trumpets, the time of grapes now. Watch this. Let's go to John chapter 15 and check this out. <clears throat> I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. You see, the Lord is here. It's now the time of the grapes. He's talking about being the true vine and everything else. He's telling them, I am the true vine. Ye are the branches. So what is he, what is he telling them now? He's telling that these guys now have to go out and produce fruit. You're the branches that are to bring in fruit. Isn't that fascinating? In 5, John 15, 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, uh, he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. Remember, some of them are going to fall away, remember? It's going to lead into what we're going to see in, in chapter 11 of Romans. So, verse 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Has that happened unto any of you? I don't know this has happened to anybody on earth. 
Anything you ask in the Lord's will, you know it, you can ask it, and it's yours. We know who he's talking to here. This is a picture of the 144,000 now. Right? This is a picture of him in Revelation 14, standing on Mount Zion that he had come on, and the 144,000 with him. He is now the vine. He is now here. It's time of the grapes. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. Hello. So shall you be my disciples. This is the 144,000. So the two places is the beginning of the 40 days with the seals workers and the beginning of trumpets while they're standing on Mount Zion with the Lord as him now the vine and the time of the grape starting, which is trumpets time. It's awesome. It's perfect every time. See, where was it? Verse 15. Let's go to verse 15 just to see it. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what is uh, what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father. I have made known unto you. OK. This is the hundred and forty four thousand. But the one we were looking to where it all began, synoptic gospels is right there where it should be in Luke chapter two. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. There's not much more. Okay, we covered that one. Luke 24, we know that group. <clears throat> we see that group. We opened up their understanding. We did Hosea 1. Hosea 10, we got Hosea 10. All right, see, some of this... I told you, it's just in my mind. I've got it. <laughs> All right, now let's check this one out. This one is Romans chapter 10. And Romans chapter 10, let's start at verse 9. Romans chapter 10 is, is going to be fairly quick. There's, uh, as it gets going, 11 is going to be a bit more, but like 12, 13, 14, uh, we're going to skip over a couple of them. 14, we'll have a couple words in there. And then uh, 15 has a great piece. And then 16 will end it. So hopefully not too, too much longer. Oh, this is a scary one. Romans 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear record that they have a zeal for God. Listen to this. They have a zeal. They have a heat. They have a fervent zeal for the Lord. But not according to knowledge for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth yikes right yikes indeed verse 9 that if thou, now listen to this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord Jesus, uh, uh, confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You see, this is one that people will go to to say, see, once saved, always saved. If you've confessed Jesus Christ, you're saved. Well, if you remain in the faith you see you can confess them and believe but if you turn around and walk away and i'll use an extreme example and you go to to be a muslim you convert to muslim uh you've turned your back on the lord you have to continue in the faith so as long as you continue in the faith you're covered right but we know that most of the church isn't. They've confessed them, but they're not living it. It's not works, but what you do in your life that people like to call works is actually reflected in how you live your life. Those don't get you saved. They're a reflection of the Lord in you, the Spirit of God working in you. 
So if you don't have any works of, of evidence of the Lord in you, then it's a little bit, then, then you're on uh, rocky ground. But I want you to understand something. We're looking at this here in the prophetic. In the prophetic. Remember what happens in the prophetic. You can confess Jesus Christ and believe in your heart and be saved. Remember? This is precisely what happened in Luke chapter 23. Remember what happened? This is the picture of the uh, of the um, crucifixion and the two that were beside Jesus on the cross. What did he say to the one on the cross? Remember, we'll say Jesus was in the middle. There was the one on his right side and there was the one on his left side. We know that the one on his right side was the one who essentially confessed Christ. In verse 40, Luke 23, verse 40, but the other answering rebuked him saying, does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man, hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Who's going to paradise, brothers and sisters? The great multitude rapture. They're the ones going to the the, the mountain carved without hands that when he comes, he's coming with the place prepared and he's going to receive them unto himself with that place prepared. So what are we seeing is going to happen during the time of seals? You can clearly, you can confess Christ. Just confess him right there. And if you died, whatever, just like can happen now, but in the is to come, it's not filled with, you know, you're not going to have time. You're not going to have time running around and doing this and doing that. You come to Christ, even in the midst of the greatest revival in human history, and eventually you're going to be running for your life. This is what's going on here. This is what you're seeing in the picture of the is to come of Romans. You're seeing this, this, salvation through confessing it and believing it and you're saved and you might be dead in the next day or two <clears throat> for back to romans 10 10 for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture saith whoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed let's see for wheresoever for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, you are saved if you call on the Lord. But did you understand what it said in the, in the last video of Romans? The, the first half that we did? Whoever isn't in Christ spirit filled, he said, are none of his. Hello. Which means this is a picture of, again, in seals, when a simple declaration of the Lord. But what if it was a declaration of the Lord in the is, and you claimed him, and you believed in him, and you went back to live into the world, <clears throat> like most, most people have, that are asleep and unprepared? Well, we know the story. We can go to, <clears throat> I think it's actually in 10. No, 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 Luke 17. Well, it's in many places, actually. <clears throat> Was it this one? Uh, what's, what's one of the good examples? It's uh, the parable of the sower is one. But another one is Luke 17, where we have um, the, par uh, the 10 lepers. There were 10 of them. They all got cleansed. They were all saved. But only one turned back with a loud voice glorifying God and gave him thanks. Where'd the other nine go? 
That's the difference of the pre-trib to the mid-trib. 10% compared to the 90%. That's the picture. That's what's being talked about here. This is the that that 90% that remains of the church that claim Christ but aren't prepared and aren't diligent and aren't in them. They'll have to endure the time of tribulation. That's why the word tribulation doesn't exist in Luke's gospel. But it's in Mark and Matthew's. We know who Mark is written to. We know it. Now listen to this. This is a piece that um, Mike had shared with me. <clears throat> that Mike from uh, Interrupts 165 had shared. And I'm not going to go into greater detail, a lot of detail of it. <clears throat> but he's going to go into more of it with some other things in his next video. In Actually, in Romans 10, let's start at 14. How then shall they call on him who they uh, on him whom they have not believed? Or how shall they believe in him who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. You see, again, the end of the 40 days or those at the end of Matthew uh, of Luke 24, those being sent out to preach the word during the time of seals. But they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then, say, uh, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. Well, this is what the group of Luke 24 were told to do, right? To go and share and spread it to the end of the world. But listen to this. This is something Mike caught. If I ever told you, yes, verily, you would say, oh, yes, of course, no problem. Well, this is another one of those things where the Strong's Concordance reveals it's not the same verily where we see everywhere else throughout, uh, throughout the New Testament. It's like, nay, but uh, doubtless, it is not at all the same verily that we see everywhere else. And this verily is only used four times. In Luke eleven twenty eight. Uh, 920 and all of it is this mm, not really no i don't think so is that's the kind of verily that's being used in this <laughs> so it says because what's he talking about he says but say they uh, uh but i say have they not heard you know the the word has gone out you see in verse 16 it says but they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? They've heard the word. The faith, uh, the, the hearing has happened. But I say, have they not heard? And the answer is, no, not really. Hello. No, not really. Verse 19. But I say, did not Israel know? First, Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people and by a foolish nation. Will I anger you? <clears throat> Isn't that exactly what we're told? He's going to bring them to jealousy. Hello. This is exactly what we read in further parts of Romans, right? He's going to use us to make them jealous. Who does he use to make them jealous? The ones that he said are not my people. The Gentiles. He's going to use the Gentiles to make them jealous. Again, showing that all of this is the pre and into seals. Verse 20. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. 
I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. You see, that's the Gentiles. Seeking out the Lord, not having asked, I mean, uh, uh, not having heard, understood, but hearing, and uh, uh, but wanting to understand, chasing, finding out. That's what's going on, right? Even though a lot of the world is still asleep, it was the Gentiles that were out seeking, but that's because they were blinded for our sakes, right? But to Israel, he saith, all day long, I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. 11. Romans 11. I might even stop it at Romans 11. We'll see what happens here. Romans 11. Listen to this. Let's start in verse 2. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Would he not, what the, uh, uh, what you not, what the scripture saith of Elijah, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and digged down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. Isn't that wild? Who's left alone? Well, there was John and Elijah. So you have the two typologies of the worker groups, and you have the Elijah, who is the one taken up in a whirlwind like that group connected to the rapture, and you have those who put their necks on the line who are the Johns who are already killed. <laughs> and what is he saying? He's the picture of those left. They've dug down their altar, the altars. Look at what it says. The sacrifice. The sacrifice. Who, who, is, who are the sacrifices during seals? Look at this. The slaughter to kill, to sacrifice, to slay. This is a picture of him saying at the end of seals, I'm the only one that's left. Those that will be part of the great multitude rapture compared to those that died. And listen to Romans 11.4. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved, I have left down, left behind to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Well, what's the image of Baal? They have not bowed down to this, the, the Antichrist. It's the same typology, right? They have not bowed down to the image of Baal, to the image of the Antichrist. And he has them reserved for the end. Well, isn't that exactly what we've understood? When we went to, is it 1 Kings? Yeah. 1 Kings 20 or 21, I think 20. We know in 1 Kings chapter 20 that we see this is a picture of the end of that 13th year of trumpets. I mean, the, the end of the 13th year of tribulation at the return of the year, the king of Syria is coming again. This time he says, their gods are the god of the hills, but not of the plains. And this time, God, in the beginning, God gives them victory because the Jews' disobedience. But this time, at the end of the 13th year of tribulation, he comes again at the return of the year, and the Syrians come with a larger group now, with a larger army. And Israel, the Jews, have a smaller army this time. But this time, the Lord God gives victory to the Jews. And, of course, that is a picture of the 14th year of tribulation, the treading of the grapes, and so forth. We've covered this before. So what happens right before this end battle that's being explained is about to take place? Well, the equivalent is the time of being at the end of the 13th year of tribulation. Well, look at what we see. In 1 Kings 15, uh, 20, verse 15, halfway through, and after them, he numbered all the people, even all the children of Israel, being 7,000. So you have this picture in the exact same context of time to the end of the sixth trumpet, which is the end of the sixth year of trumpets, which is also the end of the 13th year of tribulation. And look at what we see in Revelation chapter 11. In Revelation chapter 11, right at the end of the 13th year, in verse 13, it says, In the same hour there was a great earthquake, 
and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant, see that remnant of Israel, that residue that we saw, that residue portion that was related to the end it was saying in Romans, but it was the one that, like Isaiah, that, that remnant to the end was a frightened and gave glory to the God of heaven. And now everything above and below, uh, I mean, in heaven and on earth is now the Lord's. There's that 7,000 that he has reserved for the end. And look what happened to them. Were slain of men and fell and in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. Didn't he say all of them had to die? Let's go see what it says in Romans 11. They didn't bow down to the image of Baal. So if they didn't bow down, the Lord had 7,000. They didn't bow down to the image of Baal. And he's reserved a portion of 7,000 to the end. Let's go see what again Revelation chapter 20 says about this being bowed down to Baal. Revelation 20 verse 4. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received uh, his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, which also which actually means on. Uh, and they lived and reigned a thousand years. So are they connected to this group? They were slain. Seven thousand. And they never bowed down to worship the beast. Sounds like there might be a connection. If they are, if there is, and this is them, then it would appear that this 7,000 was a group reserved from potentially that Smyrna portion. Maybe that portion of them that were still alive of the Smyrna workers that would have to die. You see what I'm getting at? That... This, this portion of the Smyrna workers, the, the Priscilla's and Aquila's that put their necks on the line, if they have to die to be seed, to be resurrected, and it's only those that are dead that are being resurrected to rule and reign with them for a thousand years, who were the ones who never bowed down to the Antichrist, to the beast, never took his mark, never took his image, that are then being resurrected, it seems to make sense that this 7,000 would represent them or that portion of them. Because remember what it said in Luke chapter 21 and remember what it said in Revelation. Uh, in fact, let's go there. In Revelation chapter 2 about Smyrna, that some of them shall be put to death. Right. Listen to this. Fear none of those things. <gasps> Wait a second. Is that it? Did we just get it? I'm going to tell you what I what just hit me, but I'm going to have to spend some more time in it later. Listen to this. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold. The devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and you shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. You see, we know that there are those who are going to be the ones dying during seals from this group of workers. This is the group with the Lord for 40 days and then will remain during seals as the ones putting their necks on the line. We see it right here because in their death, and then it says they won't be hurt by the second death. The only way you can't be hurt in the second death is if you were resurrected in the first one, which is the ones which are the ones from Revelation 20. But what about this 10 days that it's talking about? Do you remember what we now know of the end 
of the 14 years? Oh, but that's the end of the 14th, not the end of the 13th. Oh, I thought I was close on that one. Because what do we know this final year is of the Lord? The final year before the Jubilee is one year and 10 days. Right? This final year of the Lord, when he returns feet down and fulfills that final year in the grapes of wrath, this is that seventh trumpet time. I was, I was thinking maybe it was on the other end. And what is on the other end? 10 days. Hmm. I'm going to have to ponder that a bit more, but it, it, right off the top, it, it doesn't jive. But what we do see is we know that this group is a portion of those who never worship the beast. It is a portion that the Lord said he had reserved for the end. Like they're a part of this same group. Listen to this again. In Romans 11, verse 4, But what saith the answer of God unto him, I have reserved, see, I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal, verse 5, even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. You see, so he's saying even at this time, so remember in the prophetic picture, it's this time of, of seals and towards the end of seals. And he says, look, even at this present time, I have a remnant that's working here. But I also have 7,000 who have also not bowed down the knee that I'm saving for the end. Could they be the remnant alive from the Smyrna group of seals that would then be used for that final, that, that fi end of the 13th year? Because look at what they do to finish the point on this. Look at what they do in not having bowed down the knee to, ba to Baal or to the, to the beast. It says, and in the earthquake were slain 7,000, okay, of men 7,000. And what did that cause to happen? And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven their death as seed brought forth others who gave glory to God. It's the same picture, isn't it? So it's quite possible there is, and when you talk, you know, our sister Petra, she's talked a lot about this. She's had a lot of, of understanding, a lot of revelation come and insight through the Lord about this worker group that we talk a lot about here in this ministry because we are preparing a group for the end uh, to be workers and she talks about a, a portion a group going right to the end of the the 13th to the 14th year that 14th you know that's it's part of that resurrection that they get to be a part of but they have to die because it's the ones that are dead that get resurrected so maybe that's part of the connection Interesting stuff, you see? Always a, a little bit more detail keeps coming and it grows and it gets bigger and we get better at it. We understand it more and more and more. Revelation 11, ver, uh, Romans 11, verse 7. What then? Israel has not obtained that which it seeketh, but the election has obtained it and the rest were blinded. Well, we know they were blinded, right? Uh, verse 8. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that, uh, eyes that they should not see, and eyes, sorry, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. You see, we know this, right? If we go to Luke chapter 19, we see it here, but we see it in many other places, right? Isaiah talks about it. But we know this picture right here. This triumphal entry in Luke is like the 40 days of the Son of Man. He's coming. And here he is. You only read this in Luke. When he comes near to Jerusalem, he weeps over it. In verse 42, if thou had known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come, thou shalt cast a trench about thee, encompass thee about, 
You see, these are all things we know the is, but we also see it in the is to come. So they're still blinded until what? Until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. And that is not until the great multitude rapture in the seventh year of seals. They've been blinded for 2,000 years for us, and it will continue till the end of seals at the time of the great multitude rapture. And thank goodness the Lord blinded them. That's why we read what we read here uh, da, 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 in verse 8, that the Lord hath given them a spirit of slumber and eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear. It's the Lord that did it to them because we read in Isaiah about it. It says that if he hadn't, they probably would have understood. And if they did, it would have been all over. Pretty crazy, right? This is the mercy of the Lord God for the Gentiles. For Because the house of Israel that, that's blended in with the Gentiles all over the world mixed in. Otherwise, they might the, 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 the Israelites, they would have gotten it and it would have been done. And all the rest of us would have been outside, no portion of heaven, no salvation, nothing. It was all part of his plan that he knew all the way back in the Old Testament declaring it. That if he didn't, there would have been no salvation for anybody else because they would have recognized it. Craziness. And thank goodness. Romans eleven nine, 9. And David saith, <coughs> let their table be a snare. Of course, let their table be a snare. Just like uh, Luke 21, 35. A snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their neck backwards. So, the other piece of it in the blinding that he did to them was also it was pre understood or ordained for the Gentiles benefit. But he was also doing it knowing their their stiff necks, knowing they're bowing down their neck backwards always and and the hardness in their hearts. So there was uh, another a deeper purpose or another purpose in it as well. I say then. Have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. Absolutely. For if the fall of them be the riches of the world. You see what that says? For, for the Jews, if their fall was what? He gave them the riches of the world. That's why such a small people group controls so much. He gave them the world. Why? Because we're living in their portion. We're living in their flesh time. So he gave them the riches of the world. And the diminishing, so if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, you see? So their diminishing is our riches, but in their fall he gave them the riches of the world. Follow? How much more their fullness? So when their time comes, how much more glorious is it going to be when it's their portion? For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am uh, an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving what shall the receiving, see, one, admitting of them, the receiving of them be, listen to this, but life from the dead. Remember what we said? There are two groups that get to take part in the resurrection of the dead. All of the Israelites, all of, 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 of not the house of Judah, but all Israelites that we would call Judah now, because everybody else is mixed in throughout the world, so, like we read in Daniel chapter 12, the last verse, that Daniel will lie in his plot until the last day. Um, you know, Abraham in the bos and, and Lazarus in his bosom. They're all there. They're all lying in their plots. They're all waiting for the promise. 
and they will all be resurrected, receiving life from the dead after thousands of years. Pretty crazy, right? And those even from now that will die during tribulation that were a part of it, that were part of the promise because they will all be saved. Right? The, those of, of Judah. You see? Theirs is the promise of life from the dead because theirs was the promise of the millennial reign and heaven on earth. You see? The kingdom of heaven is to them. But who gets to have part in it? The remnant Gentile workers. Pretty crazy, right? The remnant Gentile workers will also have part in it. That's how special it is for them. They're going to take part in the resurrection of the dead with these guys. It's amazing. All right, let's keep going. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's start in Romans eleven nineteen. Now we'll say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest ye spare lest he also spare not thee. He's talking to people standing in the faith. You better take heed of what it, see, this is what it's saying. Don't be high-minded. Don't, don't just be nonchalant with it because he can remove your branch as well. Verse 22, Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness. If thou continue in his goodness otherwise thou shall be cut off otherwise thou shall also be cut off you see what it's saying you can you can proclaim christ and be saved and even we're, we're talking in the prophetic is to come you can declare him but if you don't continue in his goodness he'll cut you off like he did judah but if you stay on and the time of the rapture comes, are you following? Do you, do you see why in, in Genesis chapter 8 with that whole story and that first seven and then the branch, which is the, the, the plucked? It's, it's the wild olive branch that was grafted in that is now plucked off in the, in the great multitude rapture harpazzo. For those that continued in it, during the time of seals till the time of the rapture. If they didn't, even though they cried out and declared, but yet they turned and, and they took the mark or they bowed to worship Baal, uh, the, the beast. You see, they'd have to continue in this, even in his severity, in the midst of his goodness during seals. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in for god is able to graft them in again for if thou were out of the olive tree which is wild by nature and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree you see again that branch plucked that leaf branch plucked in that seventh, in, Reve in uh, Genesis 8, that great multitude, that is the wild branch. That is the Gentiles' fulfillment of the time of the Gentiles coming to the end. And the natural branch will be grafted back in. Verse 25. Halfway through, I would not have you be ignorant for the <clears throat> of this mystery lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until, see, the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. What did Luke 21 say? This will be the time, the time of vengeance and all these things taking place until the time of the Gentiles come in. 
if it's the trotting down of the gentiles and everything well you can understand that that's only got to be until the time of the gentiles comes to an end which means it has to be taking place during seals that's why the fullness in 24 it's all connected to that end of the sixth year to that seventh year of seals verse 26 and so all israel shall be saved that is as it is written there shall come listen to this out of zion the deliverer hello you remember who the deliverer is now it's the one coming to rescue as well right and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Listen to this. This is what one of our sisters in the forum had shared with me in a private message, unless she did it in the open forum as well. Listen to what it says. So at the time of the fullness of the Gentiles, so we're talking now, the end of seals is taking place. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion a deliverer. Well, check this out. What do we see in Revelation 14? We see the Lamb who is the Deliverer that's standing on Mount Zion and he's got the 144,000 with him. We go to Zechariah chapter 8, which is the, the picture of the beginning of trumpets. And we see the Lord who is no longer jealous for Zion. Okay, he was jealous and now he's no longer jealous. And he is returned unto Zion to dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And it's what? The mountain of the Lord, the holy mountain. We're seeing that we're seeing this entire context showing that it's the end of seals to the beginning of trumpets. So where is it? Um to the beginning of trumpets. All right. So it's the end of seals to the beginning of trumpets. The deliverer has come. Uh, he shall take un away ungodliness from Jacob. And that's exactly what we see in uh, Zechariah. Is at the end of Zechariah chapter 7? Or at the end of chapter 8? We see that, uh, that the house of Israel and the house of Judah are there. So the house of Judah has no more fasting, no more mourning in the 4th, 5th, 7th, and 10th month. There will now be unto them gladness and joy. Listen to what the Lord says here in verse 27. The sister pointed this out. Remember when we talk about the again taking place? Well, here is the again taking place, and it starts with his covenant. Remember we said at the end of seals, it is the Son of Man, it is the Lamb, the Lord, the Deliverer. He is the one who is going to make the covenant to begin trumpets. Here we are in verse 27. For this is my covenant unto them when, listen to that, this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. As according to the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Remember we said Judah is to the Father, right? Uh, uh, the world is to Christ, right? Mark's group. And the Holy Ghost is the Luke group. And it says, for their father's sakes. Well, listen to what it says. We know he blinded them for the last 2,000 years till the end of seals. So when is this when? People would read this and probably thinks, think it's what happened when the Lord was here the first time. But it isn't. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Whose sins? Judah's. But he blinded them. If they're blinded and they can't accept them until the time of the Gentiles is over, this cannot be now. Because they can only see in part where the majority are blinded. Listen to verse 28. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. Well, it's, it's the gospel till the end of seals at the great multitude rapture at the end of the age of the Gentiles. And there are enemies for, for, for our sakes. Which means this has to be at the end of seals after the great multitude rapture comes in. Hello. 
Let, let's prove that out. When is he going to make this covenant? We go to Jeremiah 31. Guys, I am not going to be able to finish again. I had a feeling I might not be able to finish. My wife was laughing at me thinking, you're not going to be able to finish. There was so much great stuff all throughout that I, I knew I probably wasn't going to. But that's okay. We've got time. So we're going to do another one. I'll, I'll do one more on this. And then we're going to do a live show, uh, the second video from, from this one. So in Jeremiah 31, 31, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them. But listen to this. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inner parts. I will write in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now listen to this. And they shall teach no more every man. Well, doesn't this still happen? Where we still have to teach everybody? Aren't the Jews blinded that they can't even see the Gospels? So there has to be teaching still take place? This is the covenant that he's making at the end of days. This is the covenant that we read about in, Revel uh, in Daniel, that we read about um, that he's making to, to the very end of the seventh seal, uh, to the beginning of trumpets. It is the Lord that made this covenant. And when a covenant is made, what has to happen? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. Okay, there's the whole Aaron's rod. Listen to this, starting in verse 10. Hebrews 9, starting in verse 10. Which stood, oh, actually, you know what? Which stood in meats. So this is a lot about, uh, you know, not being concerned. There's another one we'll talk about. You'll see it in, in uh, Romans. It's about eating and what you're going to eat and everything else. So Hebrews 9, verse 10 which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and cardinal ordinances imposed on them until the time of the Reformation. We haven't shared on this in a while. Until the time of what? The Messianic Restoration. So it's imposed on them until what? The time of the end of the fullness of the Gentiles. We can show this in, we have it in our book on ministryrevealed.com. You can download for free PDF or you can get the, the, the uh, Amazon one if you want a paperback. But this is the revelation. We have it all in the book. It's the seven churches of the end of days revealed. This is the beginning of the 50 days and they're going to remain during seals. They're the apostle portion. This is the beginning of the 40 days that starts on the eighth day from the beginning of the 50. This is the group with the Lord for the 40 days, and then they remain during seals as well. And there's your about two and a half years in, which is the Constantine picture of the Antichrist. And then you have Thyatira, which is a picture to the end of the sixth year of seals. It's this period of dark ages during the time of Antichrist where they're still in the wilderness. This is in the wilderness here is the time when the, the Mark abomination takes place. And then what? At the end of the 42 months of the Antichrist and the time in the wilderness, the Lord shows up and it's what? The time of the church reformation and the period of Israel's kings. It's when the Lord will make his covenant. He's going to take over and we know during trumpets, he is there and he is high priest and king. Remember, he's revealed. We saw uh, uh, Daniel chapter 7 and more. What is this time? It'll be imposed on them until the time of reformation. At the messianic restoration. You see, there was an is reformation. There's an is to come reformation. And the picture over the thousands of years in the end of days is going to play out at that seventh seal to the beginning of trumpet's time frame. Everything always in order where it should be, guys. Uh, continuing Hebrews 9, 11. But Christ, um, 
being come a high priest of good things to come. Remember, he's high priest. Remember, we go to Zechariah chapter six. He's going to be what? He's a he's the picture of um, of Joshua, and Joshua is what? He is the one who has crowns, and he's high priest and king. He's Joshua. He's Yeshua. He's a picture of Jesus. He's going to be high priest and king. And then there's going to be the one, the man whose name is the branch. And he's the one who's going to build the temple. He's the one who laid the foundation. He's going to build the temple. And we read earlier in Zechariah that this is, and later, that it's Zerubbabel. So whoever this modern day Zerubbabel will be is the one who's going to be build the, lay the foundation during seals. And he's going to be the one building the, the, the temple during the first half of trumpets. Well, Jesus Yeshua, the high priest and king, is going to be over the 144,000. And look at what it says. And he shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne. And the council of peace shall be between them both. Why? Because they're the two witnesses. We've shared on that many times, right? So there is Joshua, the high priest and king. And oops, in Hebrews 9, we're seeing all of this exact same timing and context all throughout. When he's now become high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building neither of the blood of goats and calves but of his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having ob uh, obtained eternal redemption let's go shall sprinkle the blood where is it uh, right here verse 15 and 16 down and for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death and the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Now listen to this. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead otherwise there is no strength at all while the testator liveth you see if he's making a new testament i mean uh, um, uh, a new covenant at the end of seals to begin trumpets and judah comes in after the great multitude rapture then that means he must do it again We've talked about this many times over the years, right? We know that he's got to do it again for this covenant that he's got to take away for their sins. And we know that this greater portion of sins is going to happen throughout Judah, but also with the workers. And we know it from Leviticus chapter 1 that this sin sacrifice, this atoning sacrifice that's going to take place is going to be the bull. And this is the one for, as we were discussing earlier, that portion of the 144 that that john 15 when he comes as the vine and for those that don't bring forth fruit and there's we know there's a falling away something that's going to take place but they've been all sealed with god's name written on their foreheads so they cannot be left and for that cause he's going to be the atoning bull for the priestly line of the 144,000 of those that fall away and have done something that caused them to go askew during the time of trumpets. So this is this is his new covenant that he must uh, um, be sacrificed for. Because as long as the testator is alive, then it is of nothing. There is no there's no covenant without the sacrifice of blood. It's crazy. We've got a, a deep, deep video that goes into that. If you're interested, you can watch the video called again. 
Uh, but if you're newer to the channel, I do not recommend you start there. You must understand the differences in the Gospels. You must understand the revelation of the 14 years and how they apply to each portion of Gospel and who these workers are in their portions. This here in Romans is really shedding light and going into deeper detail to show so much more in this remnant worker group that are that portion of the bride that will remain to be the cover for the wheat that is coming of the great multitude who the 144,000 will be the ones to bring in because the others, the majority of them have died so that more wheat can be produced during seals. It's incredible. It's such an exciting thing. Man, I didn't want to get to this length of video anymore. I was pushing the envelope thinking I would be able to get the rest of Romans all in this one, but I only got three chapters in because it went into so many different places that every single time it did, it was showing everything we already understood to be in its time and in its portion. And I just love it. Look at this. It's almost one o'clock in the morning. I'm still fired up, excited. I'm still in my garage with the door cracked open at one o'clock in the morning, screaming in my little booth here. All right. So with that, brothers and sisters, I am done. I love you. God bless you. God bless your families. Please remember, support the ministry. There is a need all around. We're grateful. We love you. And part three will be coming in the future one. I love you. God bless you. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.